Let's see. So we're going to open up Quake 2. And this is a managed version. So what you just saw there in that, in that little blip, yeah. that was Quake 2, which was completely compiled to MSIL, being um, jitted on the, um, or the necessary functions for startup at least, mm -hmm. um, being jitted and run on top of the CLR. Everything you're seeing right now is being run on top of the CLR. This is all software rendering. Um, this is, you know, no hardware involved, uh, no tricks being played here. So, the first question that normally comes up, and I'll sure. make this a little bit bigger, is how much did I have to pay for getting this um, in MSIL? And um, the answer to that is not very much at all. Now you're talking about performance price. Performance price. Yes. Um, so, if you're, it depends actually a lot on the architecture for this particular app since it's so CPU bound and we do different tuning in the JIT compiler versus the static compiler. But on a Pentium 4, you're going to see about a uh, 10 to 15 percent performance hit for having recompiled to MSIL. In the Pentium 3 case, you're going to see no hit whatsoever. They actually run at parity. And on a Centrino like this, where we've got some, um, where they have to be tuned specially for, and we focus a little more on the on the Pentium 4 in our static compiler, you actually see the managed version be about 5 to 10 percent faster. Wow. Um, so, at least on the Pentium 4, you are paying about 10 percent. So, well, what are you getting in exchange for that? What you get is the ability to start integrating .NET code directly into your existing source base without really having to do any amount of work, any real, uh, any really arduous work. So, just as an example, what was involved in getting this to run slash CLR um, about um, two to four days Vertigo software spent, and most of that was taking old C APIs that didn't compile with our C++ front end and just fixing them up so that they were slash TP clean. Uh, slash TP is our switch for compiling C files or C++ files. And then from there, they went ahead and implemented an extension. And here's what that looks like. I'm just going to open up the command console and execute radar. Now, what radar brings up is a Windows form which has the, which uses the system about drawing APIs. We've got a smooth gradient here. This is all the, um, you know, this is all managed code. And here's what this does. It actually provides us with a radar of everything that's going on in the map. We've got all of our enemies, all of our power-ups, and all of our items being rendered through this radar. Um, and this is all live. This is all directly integrated in with the native engine. But of course, having something sitting off here on the side isn't as interesting as it could be. So I'm going to right-click here on this extension and click on Overlay on Quake. It focus back to the Quake window. And now we've actually got this radar being rendered on top of the existing um, uh, native rendering. So keep in mind what's actually going on here, right? We've got managed code. This is all managed code, which is directly inspecting core data structures in the Quake 2 rendering engine. It's figuring out where all the objects are in relationship to the first person, and it's laying them out on this radar, all using managed code. Kind of the really interesting thing here is that Quake 2 was written without .NET in mind. You know, they weren't contemplating having to do any sort of a slash CLR port or adding managed code in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it with an application like this where it was definitely designed without that in mind, uh, it really speaks to how, how you can do this for almost any application. Uh, in fact, we've got um, a large number of Microsoft source bases compiled this way where we can add some interesting functionality. In fact, we've got Visual Studio compiled this way. Um, we've mm -hmm. got PowerPoint, Outlook, Word that compiles this way. And once you've got a compiled slash CLR and you've got these MSIL implementations, you can make direct calls from your existing source directly into other MSIL stuff. So we've got two other cool demos. Very, very cool. The, um, I have one question. Sure. When you say it's running in the CLR, that just means that you can make calls between the CLR and the native code. So it is true that you can make calls between the, the CLR and the native code, but the executable itself is implemented in MSIL. And I, I will. It did run. You're actually running machine code. You actually are running machine code, but um, that machine code is using the managed calling convention, for example. It's fully CLR aware. It has been compiled um, after having referenced .NET metadata. So the fact that you had it in MSIL originally gives it some additional powers in being able to access managed functionality. And the GC is managing all of your objects, though. 
So the the so it's fully managed memory. It's that's it's that's, not that's what's not true. true. So what okay. what is all your data? Because it's not checked. Checked. It's not checked. It's not saved. It's not verifiable IL. It's just for your existing code. What we do is we treat MSIL like a like a, a new um, assembly language. Yeah. So your data still ends up on the native heap. You end up not being verifiable for the existing code. Mm -hmm. uh, it's we, we can't perform miracles, which would be pretty much required in order to get some of that stuff working. <laughs> um, but, but I just wanted yeah. to point out that that's a that could be a, a, an interpretation of wow, I've you know I've whacked CLR and all of a sudden sure. all it, my memory yeah. is managed for me and I, my C plus plus app. I mean, that's, the experienced programmers wouldn't think that, but it could be interpreted that way. Sure. I just wanted yeah. to point that out. As yeah, it, it is an important distinction. Um, the 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 power that you get is that since you've got something compiled into MSIL. Now you can call out into other MSIL stuff without having to do any transitions, right? So, for example, in this extension and one we're going to see in a later demo, I can have my existing C++ source code, and I can stick a line in there that calls out to like an Avalon API, for example, and it just works. And I can tie all those things together without ever having to do code transitions, without um, ever having to specify DLL import attributes. Uh, without having to go through a common interface, it just works really seamlessly. Uh, something that is interesting that we're going to be doing in the next version of the compiler is um, you'll be able to use one of our language features to actually get garbage collected behavior out of your native types. Uh, but that's a feature that we're doing in, in the next version, which um, is codenamed, I, I think we've released a codename, Orcus. Okay. Um, the, the way that works is you use the GC new keyword. And in order to put stuff on the garbage collected heap, just to use the new keyword to put stuff on the native heap. Mm -hmm. So right now, you can only GC new. In 2005, you can only GC new .NET types. But in the next version, you'll actually be able to GC new anything, including existing C++ types. So we wire it up in the compiler, so you actually get garbage collection for your native stuff. Um, that's, that's something we're really looking forward to. In the next version, you'll be able to mix everything. The distinction between managed and native is going to really blur. You'll be able to um, uh, derive a .NET type with a C++ existing native base type and vice versa. You'll be able to do pretty much whatever you want to. How does all that stuff help us? Um, about that. Yeah, so the, the new language stuff that we're doing is, um, is actually all being standardized. Uh, it's called the C++ CLI binding. Um, the standard document is, um, or the current draft of it, is completely public. It's available on msdn.microsoft.com slash visual C. Uh, and the stuff about doing mixed types is all in there, and it's specifically something that we're going to get to in Orcus. Outstanding. 